The Fourth Crusade, the Conquest of Constantinople. All the Crusades have had their peculiarities. In the first, the Christians conquered Jerusalem. In the second, the Christians lost Edessa. While in the third, they lost control of Jerusalem and most of the previously conquered territories to Saladin's forces. However, the Fourth Crusade was somewhat different, although its initial objective was the reconquest of Egypt and Jerusalem. The multiple debts of the Crusaders to reach their destination forced them to work as mercenaries in the service of various nobles who had territorial conflicts with their neighbours, which made this crusade more motivated by political and economic issues than with the strengthening of Christianity with which the first three crusades were justified. And that is why today we will tell you the story of this mercenary crusade, the Convocation of Innocent III. After the truce signed during the Third Crusade, there were a few years of relative peace, during which the Frankish states became Italian trading colonies. However, in 1119, Pope Innocent III decided to call a new crusade to recover Egypt and Jerusalem. At first, his convocation met with little success among the European kings. France and England were fighting against each other, while the Germans were at odds with the papal power. However, it was the folk of Neuilly, one of the great peaches of the time, who managed to convince the Crusaders in a tournament organised in Equi to participate in a new crusade, after winning the support of Count Theobald of Champagne. After appointing Theobald as head of this army, several nobles from England, Northern France and the Netherlands joined the army. Along the way, some German knights and several Italian nobles would also join forming a force of about 33,500 crusaders and about 4,500 horses. The detour that changed the war. The land route being too difficult, the crusaders decided to go to Venice and take the sea route. Once there, Doge Enrico made a deal with expedition leader Boniface of Montferrato, who had replaced Theobald after his death in 1201 to change the destination of the crusade and direct it to Zadar, a city that the Venetians had lost and which at that time was under the control of King Emmerich of Hungary. The deal was that the crusaders would regain control of Zadar and in return the Venetians would defer the payment of 85,000 silver marks they requested for the transport, allowing them to embark for Egypt to conquer the Holy Land. Despite the Pope's disavowal of this expedition, the Crusader fleet set sail from Venice on November 8th, 1202, and seven days later the city was conquered. In response to this measure, the Pope decided to excommunicate the Venetians for manipulating the sacred mission of the Crusaders for their benefit. The Crusaders' Second Deflection while the Crusader army was wintering in Zadar, a messenger arrived bearing an offer from Alexius IV, a pretender to the Byzantine throne. If the Crusader army would detour to Constantinople and help him reconquer his throne, he would provide them with a contingent of 10,000 soldiers for the Crusade, guarantee payment of the debt they had contracted with Venice, and pledge funds and supplies to undertake the conquest of Egypt. Lacking money and supplies, Monferrato and Dandolo accepted the change of plans and set sail for Constantinople after meeting with Alexius IV, which caused several crusaders to oppose and abandon the crusade as they were moving away from their goal for the second time. After several unsuccessful attempts to take Constantinople, the Venetians managed to breach the wall on July 17, 1203, allowing the crusaders to enter. This forced Emperor Alexius III to escape to the Thracian city of Mosinopolis. The imperial dignitaries, in order to solve the succession problem, released from prison the deposed Emperor Isaac II Angelo, father of Alexius, and restored him to the throne, together with his son, after appointing then co-emperors on August 1st of that year in the church of Hagia Sophia. The default on payments. To fulfil the payment promises he had made to Venetians and Crusaders, Alexius was forced to collect new taxes and to confiscate some ecclesiastical silver objects, 
but it wasn't enough. The situation became increasingly difficult. On the one hand, the subjects were increasingly dissatisfied with the taxes of the new emperor, while on the other hand, the crusaders were impatient with the lack of money, which led to frequent street clashes between crusaders and Byzantines. These conflicts were exploited by Alexius V Ducas, the son-in-law of the deposed Alexius III, to provoke a series of revolts that led to the deaths of Alexius IV and his father Isaac II, and to the rise of Alexius V at the beginning of 1204, the fall of Constantinople. The death of Alexius IV and his father led to a wave of destruction by the Crusaders, who conquered the city on April 12th, 1204, after taking numerous casualties and unleashing a great fire. This situation led Alexis V to flee to Mosinopolis, where his father-in-law, Alexius III, had taken refuge a year earlier. According to the historian Nikitas, neither the churches nor the monasteries were spared by the Crusaders, and in the Hagia Sophia itself, the silver iconostasis and various books and objects of worship were destroyed. Finally, order was restored and the spoils were distributed. A quarter for the future emperor, three-eighths for the crusaders and another three-eighths for the Venetians. Although Boniface of Montferrat wanted to become emperor, a committee of crusaders chose Baldwin IX of Flanders, the first monarch of the Latin Empire, as emperor. Consequences of the Fourth Crusade The Byzantine Empire was dismembered into a series of states, some Latin and some Greek. The Crusaders recorded this event as Partitio Terrarum Imperi Romani, partition of the Eastern Roman Empire. As a result of this looting, an unprecedented number of works of art and relics were brought to Western Europe. After these events, the Empire of Nicaea, one of the Greek states, emerged and succeeded in retaking the city of Constantinople and restoring the Byzantine Empire in July 1261. However, the damage left by the Crusade was devastating. Although the Eastern Roman Empire continued to exist for another two centuries, it remained a mere shadow of its former self. The Fourth Crusade dealt a double blow to the Frankish states located in the Holy Land. On the one hand, it deprived them of the military reinforcements they needed to defend themselves against Muslim attacks. On the other hand, it caused the knights to emigrate to Constantinople, causing them to abandon the defence of the Frankish states. We hope you've enjoyed this fourth video about the Crusades and that you will join us in the bloody history of this conflict, which continues in the story of the Fifth Crusade. Don't close the video yet! Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us to grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.